Okay, so welcome to another video. Today I want to show you how to create this nice looking WooCover inside Microsoft Word. And it's a fairly simple minimalistic design, but there are a lot of ways how you can change it, you know, different colors, different fonts to make it your own. Okay, so this is what we want to create. Let's get started. I will start in a blank document and most likely the first thing we want to do is jump into the layout and set the right page size because that's kind of important and it's always hard if you change your mind in the middle of your project and you want a different page size. So that's first things first. Then I will jump into the insert menu and we want to start with this wavy shape. And if I open the shapes menu, you can see there are a lot of shapes to choose from. For example, this one, which is called connector curved. But if I draw it, it it's kind of like broken. There is this strange transition between those two curves. It doesn't look very nice. Of course, you can always go to the insert shapes and draw your own shape using this one, which is called curve and just draw those individual shapes. But this could get kind of tricky sometimes and you have to adjust those points. It's a little bit more advanced. So what we will do instead today is I will, we will go to insert menu shapes and I will select this shape, which is called flowchart document. And watch what happens if I draw this shape. So I'll click this one and draw it like this. And you can see that immediately we have this nice looking curvy shape on the bottom of the shape. We just have this extra stuff on the top, which we don't really need. So let's get rid of this. I will right click this shape and select edit points, which means that I want to edit those individual points. Then I will click this point, right click and select open path. So I have two different points in here and I want to get rid of this point, this point and that point. I can do it in a few different ways. I can right click the point and choose delete point or I can as well click the control key on my keyboard. And if I hover over the point right now, it will change to the cursor will change to this X symbol, which means that if I click now, I will delete this point. So this is exactly what I want to have. I mean, it looks kind of strange because there is this fill still applied and we don't really need any fill. So I'll right click and select format shape and I will set the fill to no fill. And for the line, I can probably keep right now as it is. And I want to have multiple duplicates of this shape. Now, before I do so, I will resize the shape to go outside of the page. And you can write me in the comments, why do you think that I've resized this shape to be this big in the first place? So if I do so, I will copy it in the clipboard using the Ctrl C shortcut and then I will press the Ctrl V shortcut to paste it and I will do it like, I don't know, like 10 or 15 times. It's really up to you how many times you want this to be pasted. Now I want to select all the shapes and probably the best thing to do is first see how many shapes I even have in my document. So I can jump into the format shape ribbon, which I'm already in, and click the selection pane button, which will show me the selection pane. Then I will jump into the home ribbon. And again, there is this uh, select menu and even here there is a selection pane that's the same comment. And in the select button, I will select select objects. Then I will draw this selection rectangle from the left top to the right bottom, like so. And hopefully it will select me all my char you know, flow chart uh, shapes in my document, which it did. Then jump back into the format shape and align those properly. So align center. And I can even say align, you know, distribute vertically, but they, they should be distributed vertically already. So it shouldn't make any difference. Then I will group it together. So group, group. Now everything is in one group and I will just resize it to be much smaller. Move it to, to the left side of the page like so. And resize it to be a little bit bigger just so it's filling like all the way from the left to right like so. I really like this. So this should be our starting point for our waves. Now I want to have this background which doesn't go all the way up to the pages, uh, to the borders of the page. So I will insert a new rectangle, insert shapes rectangle, which is this one. And there are a few different ways how to make sure that it's not touching the, the borders or the, you know, the page uh, borders. I can try to draw it like this, but how can I be sure that those gaps are you no know, evenly spaced? So what I prefer to do instead is just move the rectangle to be touching the page instead, like, like so, so I'll resize it to touch the border or the edge of the page on, the, on the, all the sides, like so. And then what I will do is I will again show the format shape. So right click and select format shape and I will edit it, edit a line which will be in the white color and just start increasing the width. So right now the width is one point. It's not even visible, almost invisible, but I will press the up arrow on my keyboard or just, I think that I can just press this one multiple times and watch what happens as it starts approaching some higher values. So if I set it manually, for example, to 60, now it looks like what we want to achieve. So this looks like that the blue rectangle is a little bit smaller than the page, but the spacing is even on all the sides. So I will right click and select the move to or send to back. And now I can see both the rectangle and the waves. And maybe now it's a good time to set the color palette. So I will go to the design, 
open the colors and for this project I will probably go with this blue color palette and I'm pretty sure that I've used some predefined colors for all the shapes I don't quite remember which they were but let me just try to guess I think that for the rectangle itself I was using like uh, maybe this color and then for the lines for the wavy lines I was using some light blue maybe this one and I've actually had a copy maybe I will make it a little bit bigger like so I've actually had a copy of those lines, so I will copy those lines and the, there are again multiple ways how to do this, Control c Control v is one way, but what I prefer instead is to press Ctrl on my keyboard and the Shift on my keyboard. If I do so and I move the shape, it will create me a copy, which is the Ctrl, what stands for Ctrl, but as I'm holding the Shift as well, it will also try to align it to 90 angle degrees, so it just moves it horizontally or vertically. So I'll move it below the original shape, Again, in the format shape, I will jump to the line properties and set the line color to be white, like so. So we are pretty much almost done. The only thing that's missing is this text, and I had this small rectangle on top, so I will create a text insert shapes. I will create a new text field, it's called, it's called text box, which I will draw like this. And I think that I've written book cover, so why don't I you know, type it one more time and set the size of the font to be much bigger. And for the font itself, I've I believe I was using Zona Pro Extra Bold, which is a demo of a font. You can get it. I will put the link in the description. Now, we don't want to see this uh, rectangle around the text, so I'll in the shape format. For the shape file, I'll select no fill and no outline. And for the text itself, there are actually multiple ways how to set the fill color for the text. And really, when I say multiple, there are three ways how to set the fill color of the text. So the first thing in the format shape, there's these text options. I can select the solid fill, and then select the text color, which I believe I was using something like light blue for the top line. I can also go to the shape format on the top and there is this fill color in here, which is the same thing. Or the last thing in the home ribbon, there is this font color or text color in here, which is the same thing again. For the next line, I will select a different color, maybe a little bit darker one. And then I had this rectangle, which was kind of like aligned with the text itself. So insert new shapes being the rectangle, like so, like this and set the fill to be maybe like a little bit lighter than the background like so and no outline and maybe change the size a little bit and position it I'm, I'm precisely positioning it with the arrow keys on my keyboard so i can just press up and down or left or right and position it to be aligned with the text itself as well as with the top part of the, rect of the background rectangle like so and i think that we are done this is pretty much it what's uh, really needed to create this nice looking book cover but before i end this tutorial i want to show you one more thing and it is maybe you've created this nice looking book cover now you want to put in some actual content so how do you do this because you only have one page and you don't have like second page right so if i start pressing the enter key you know everything starts moving and there is the reason for this and the reason is because if I select anything, you will see, you know, like for example, this text box, you will see there's this tiny little anchor, you know, anchor icon, even for this background rectangle. And the anchor icon just uh, shows us uh, where to, you know, where it's like being placed on the page. So if I want to move something, it will just affect all the objects, which is the anchor in here. And if I select this rectangle, you can see now I cannot even type, I cannot even press the enter key. So my preferred where is to show the selection pane. So in the home ribbon, I will select select selection pane. I will pretty much hide everything like so. I'll hide all those elements by clicking the eye icon in the selection pane. And then instead of pressing the enter key, I will just move my text cursor down to the bottom of the page and double click around here. So it will just move the cursor without moving all the stuff and press the enter key a few more times. Or if I want, I can also create a page break. So inside the layout, I can create a page break, which will immediately jump to the next page, then move to the previous page and show my elements back. So as you can see, now I have a nice looking cover page, book cover page, but at the same time, I also have a blank page number two, which I can start typing or put another stuff in there without affecting the first page at all. And that's really it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and see you next time. Thank you and bye.